Andy Daniel, did you want to say something? Always. Of course, always. Okay, it's too bad. We, don't, we were just, oh, did you look at the time? Time's up. I'm sorry, we just ran out of time, Andy. Oh, I just Can't ran out. Nobody. I just ran Everybody, out of time. Andy tape. Danielli. Thank you, and uh, I'd like to thank Dan for having a, such a great tea party here. He's doing a really great job. A couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, Friday of next week, a week from tomorrow, in uh, the uh, Eagle Oaks Country Club, that's right Hold the mic uh, a little in Farmingdale, uh, we're having the first annual Ronald Reagan dinner, honoring Congressman Chris Smith. Now, this is my thinking, and I wanted to, to let you guys make a decision about this. It's only $65. You can dress up, includes hors d'oeuvres, a really good dinner, open bar for three hours. Some of you could do some real damage with that, I'm sure. Um, but more importantly, this is how we change things politically. Chris Smith, whether you like him or not, or indifferent, he's going to be our congressman for the next two and a half years. All right? We hope. We, he's going to win election again. What we need to do is keep in front of him as far as keep visually in front of him. It would be a great thing if there was 10 or 20 of us or even 30 of us there at the dinner sitting together with, with tea party pens. That's my suggestion. All right, I'm going to hand out information about it and you can register um, uh, with, there's information at the bottom here for, for registration. And I put my email address, if you don't have it, shoot me an email, tell me you're coming and we'll sort of get organized. What we want to do, we're not going to accost the guy, but we're going to we're going to introduce ourselves as a group. I think this is important, and it's a very inexpensive, compared to most political fundraisers, it's a very inexpensive, it's a real value. If you're going to a country club for $65, and you get to have a nice evening, they're going to have music, they're going to have good food, I think we should go. So I'm going to pass it. Does anyone think they might go? Okay. It's next Friday the 13th. <laughs> There's a second thing I want to ask you, and then I'll finish. Write it down, people! Alright. How many people here think that if Obama gets elected, the country's finished? Okay, put your hands down. How many people here think that, okay, if he gets elected, this is America, we'll still survive it, it'll be okay? I don't. I don't. I think we're done. Alright. So my question to you, I spoke to a group Monday night, my question to you, there's about 70 of us here, maybe less. If it was up to us in this room tonight, just us, would America survive November? Yes. Yes. Yes, I believe so. The things that you're talking about tonight is how we make a change. All right? Getting people to vote, registering all your friends, all your acquaintances, all the people who are conservative, that's the most important thing. But there's a second thing that I want to just briefly talk to you about that's more important than that even. And that is our First Amendment rights. All right? You have to ask the average person, what's the First Amendment about? And they say it's about being able to say whatever you want, wherever you want, and your own free religion, whatever. That's not it. The founders put the First Amendment number one because they were afraid, once they died off, and the next generation died off, they were afraid that we would be overrun with bureaucracy, the government would get really big, and the individual would get really small as far as individual liberties. And that's exactly what happened, and that's why they gave us the First Amendment, so we would have the legal right to speak up and speak out against a government out of control. And that's what we have now. We have a government out of control. All right? So, we need to speak out. There's less than 120 days left. We don't have a lot of time for social parties and, you know, baseball and all. I'm sorry. People ask me, I'm a, I'm a big motorcycle fan. That's my life, really. People say, you're taking a lot of trips this summer? I'm like, no, I'm working on saving the country. What are you doing? Now, I have a question for you. You have these new t-shirts, your East Jersey t-shirts. Has anyone worn them out in public yet? Yes. Oh, you just got them. Oh, okay. All right. Then I, well, I've been wearing my Baracula t-shirt for four months now. <laughs> and um, I could say I've been wearing similar t-shirts for three and a half years. I've had one person give me a negative comment in three and a half years. And I work out at a gym in Neptune. 
<laughs> right? I haven't had one person at the gym say anything to me because they're ashamed of Obama. Or they can't but what I want to say to you is, are you going to wear these t-shirts? Absolutely. Okay? Your t-shirts, my t-shirts, whatever. You can get my t-shirts on our uh, website, that's fine. But what I'm asking you is, people are going to come up to you and they're going to say, I like your t-shirt. All right? They're going to say, or worse yet, to me, this is offensive. They're going to say, hey, thanks for all you're doing. Now, people who know me say, thanks, I really appreciate what you're doing for the country. That pisses me off. Because what I say when people walk up to me, and I can't make it through Costco without 10 people stopping me. They say, hey, I like your t-shirt. I don't say thank you, I don't say hey, great, whatever. I get right in their face, nicely, and I say, do you think that we're gonna survive if Obama's reelected? And they say, no. Most people say no. And then I say, okay, what, what's your name? Joe. Joe, I said, Joe, if it's only up to you and me, would we save this country? You would be surprised, most people stop and think about it, either say, I don't know, or I hope so, whatever. And they say, I, I, I want to, and I hand them one of these, and you're going to get one of these. You can go to our website for free, print out copies of it in black and white, go to Staples and put it on colored paper. All right? This, this I believe, is our 2012 version of Common Sense. All right? What we have to do is, every chance we get, talk the First Amendment. All right? I do it constantly. I go to Wawa, get a cup of coffee, the person's nice, nice and comfortable. Sir, are you having a good day? I said, I'm having a great day. I'd be having a better day if I didn't have a communist in the White House. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Most people say, yeah, I'm with you. And I say, oh, okay, you with me? Here, you gotta join us. I'm handing these things out all day long. That's what we gotta do. I was at City Field watching the Met game about three weeks ago. Anyone been to City Field since they opened it? Compl total difference. The people there are completely, the people working there, polite, well, as soon as you get there, everyone that works there, welcome to City Field, welcome to City Field. This is worth the time to tell the story. I'm flipping burgers, we're having a barbecue uh, outside in the tailgate section there. And my family's with me, and they're nothing like me. They're real quiet, conservative, and all that. And I'm flipping burgers, and we're right past the walkway. And we're in New York City, very liberal. But it doesn't matter, I'm wearing my Bracula t-shirt, I'm flipping burgers. And as people walk by, I smile, and I say, welcome to City Field. They look at me and say, thank you. And I say, what do you think, Obama? Now most of them gave me a thumbs up, which is okay. The ones who gave me a thumbs down, I gave them a vinyl sheet, that's great. But the point, I'm, the reason I'm telling you this story, is at first my family thought I was nuts. And then once they saw it was a little bit okay, they started to ask people, thumbs up, thumbs down, and before long there were conversations going and people were, you see, we've gotten to a point where we're losing our First Amendment rights. We're getting to the point where you're thought of as being a racist or some kind of idiot if you speak out against a government that's taking away all of our rights. We have to change that. And that's why I urge all of you, less than 120 days to go, we have to be talking about this to everyone. Political correctness is killing us, all right? I think it's totally, totally fine to talk about politics to everyone and anyone. Because if we don't, we're going to lose this country. All right? So I'm going to pass this out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. 126 days.